Alrighty, everybody. Hello, hello. <clears throat> What's up? Welcome back. That's right. Welcome back to a full six straight days of consecutive gameplay streaming. Well, I guess the exception is tomorrow. There's, It's not necessarily gameplay streaming, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Welcome back. I'm back from break. I hope that all of you had a good day away yesterday from my streams, no matter what you did. If you had a chance to catch up on everything over on DSP Gaming on YouTube, uh, you know, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found all the stuff I've been doing recently entertaining. Uh, this week, in particular, is going to be an interesting week. Because this week, I'm basically going to be attempting to finish, not really finish up, but get as far uh, into the two main playthroughs that I've been doing as I possibly can uh, before new content and new releases start hitting next week, all right? I know in the last couple of weeks, there's been other things balancing it out. Like, for example, Mortal Kombat 11 in particular has taken up a lot of time away from me doing these ongoing narrative-style playthroughs. Um, but this week, every day, there's going to be progress and, you know, major progress in each of the, uh, you know, the games that I'm playing. We'll talk about that as I, I get to the schedule here, okay? Um... Also, I want to talk a little bit about my day off yesterday, which was, honestly, it was freaking weird. It was. It was, like, eye-opening and, sadly, I hate to say, a little bit disturbing in regards to recovery of at least my area of the country from uh, the coronavirus, okay? So we're going to talk a little bit about all that stuff. We're also going to talk about tomorrow, which is going to be an interesting and exciting day, I feel, with this big PS5 reveal finally going to happen. After, you know, how long we've been waiting and waiting and waiting to hear about this PS5 reveal. We're apparently finally, finally going to get some answers. How many answers? I don't know. I don't know realistically how much we're going to get out of this supposedly hour-long presentation. But it should be interesting. Okay? I guess first, before we get to talk about my day off, let's talk about the schedule. Let's talk about games, which is what you guys are here for regardless, right? So, here's the deal. Okay? Um, today, Fire Emblem Three Houses on the main gameplay stream. Three to four hours of progress. Continuing on with all of the development of these people and their social interactions, leveling them up. Combat to level them up as well. Training, all that stuff. Should be a fun stream. I played this two hours Monday night, and we did some pretty good progress, so I'm looking forward to more today. Okay? Tonight, Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition. A two-hour late-night stream. Of development. Hope you'll be here for that. Um, even though it's the first time I'm really playing Sleeping Dogs on a late night stream. Alright? Should be fun. Tomorrow, it's the big PS5 event. This event is at 1 p.m. Pacific time. It's supposed to be an hour long. Maybe it'll go a little longer. We'll see. But what it's supposed to be is a reveal of major games for the console that are going to make you get hyped to buy this console later this year. So, we're going to be treating this as if it were E3. What I mean by that is we're going to be streaming about an hour beforehand together here. Um, it's going to be very interactive. All I really want to do is talk to you guys about <clears throat> what do you think is going to happen during this press conference? What can we expect? Uh, what games are we hyped to see debut on the PS5? Whether it's long-standing uh, IPs, rebooted IPs, or just new, new things. You know, what are we excited to see on the console, okay? So we're going to be talking about all this. <clears throat> and then the event's going to happen at 1 p.m. We're going to watch it live together. I'm going to be taking copious notes during the event. I will uh, host it here on my channel so that we can uh, watch it all together. And then uh, afterward, I'm going to do a live recap and reactions stream like I always do for E3. Okay? It's not E3, obviously. This would have been E3 week if you guys aren't aware. This week right now would have been E3 if E3 were taking place this year. So this kind of is the Sony event for E3 right now, all right? So I'll do my recap and reactions immediately after that, and it should be pretty fun. I, you know, I love doing this around E3 time. Right now we have nothing for Microsoft at all, so let's hope that this Sony event is pretty fun. And we get a lot of information. I would love to hear a bunch of information about the great games they think that they're going to be bringing out for this console. Um, what I'm hoping, though, is that they actually talk about games that are actually coming out this year and not, oh, here's games we're developing that'll be out in, like, you know, 2025 or something stupid like that. 
but I guess we'll see. All right, now. Ladies and gentlemen, the vest streak, you know, has been continuing for so long. Yes, it is going to be in effect tomorrow. I know that this is not a gameplay stream. I know that the stream will be broadcasting, then shutting down, and then coming back up. But, yeah, we are going to be trying to hit the a, a vest streak goal during that stream. So, FYI, very much like all my other streams, it will be in effect, okay? Just so everyone knows, some people already have asked me, well, what about this stream? It's so different. Um... It's so different. So, are you going to be doing, you know, your vest goal? Yeah, for that that segment, it's going to be like my first streaming segment. It's going to count, okay? Hopefully, it won't screw it up. I'm hoping that because it's a different kind of stream. It's not gameplay, and it's going to be shutting down to watch the presentation and then coming back. I'm hoping that we hit the goal, and it doesn't screw everything up because of the fact that it's a different kind of stream. But I guess we'll see tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow night, Thursday night, more sleeping dogs, all right, two more hours of sleeping dogs on Thursday night. Um, and then over the course of this weekend, what I'm going to do is during the daytime every day, so, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's either going to be Fire Emblem or Sleeping Dogs, and really it's going to be at my discretion. If I feel like doing more Fire Emblem or more Sleeping Dogs is going to determine what I play more of, okay? Um, I'm almost leaning towards Friday would be Sleeping Dogs and Street Fighter. Saturday would be... Uh, Fire Emblem and Morrowind, and then Sunday would be Sleeping Dogs and Animal Crossing. That's kind of what I'm leaning towards, okay? And then Monday would probably be, like, Minecraft and Fire Emblem, and that would end the streaming week. That's what I'm thinking, all right? Now, <clears throat> yes, that does mean that Animal Crossing, starting this week, is only going to have one session, and it's going to be like that moving forward. Animal Crossing is really only going to be one session a week from now on, I have to take the night streams to play the main game releases that I'm doing in a lot of cases here because I cannot be monstrously backlogged and end up trying to play like five games at once. So please, I hope you guys understand that, that I will be using the night streams at least, you know, a few of them a week to be continuing on with the main playthroughs. And therefore, Animal Crossing is just going to be once a week moving forward. Okay? <clears throat> and Morrowind will continue. It'll be once a week. Minecraft will continue. After this week, Minecraft will go into its late-night session slot of Monday nights, okay, to make room for another daytime stream for another major game playthrough, okay? So that's how we're handling it. Now, Tuesday of next week is my day off. When I come back, supposedly, on that Wednesday, the 17th of June, it's the launch of the expansion of Pokemon Sword. Now, here's the thing that's actually throwing me off a little bit. Everyone's getting super hyped for this. But if you actually read, like, they posted up today to advertise for it, and they're like, yeah, there will be new Pokemon available, um, and new story elements when made available. And I read that as, it almost seems like what they're saying is the new story will not be available at launch. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's kind of how I read it. I'm reading it, and it's like, when they're made available, well, why wouldn't it be available as soon as you release your, your Season Pass expansion? So, almost, maybe it's not. I don't know. Um, hopefully, we have more information by Wednesday. Because it would really suck if I buy the expansion, we boot it up, and there's nothing to do besides catch a few random Pokemon. There's no story or nothing. That would be disappointing. Alright. I would want to wait, honestly, until the new story element releases. Because that's what I want to do. I want to travel to the new region. Uh, I want to, you know, catch the new Pokemon as part of that main story. And then if I don't catch all the Pokemon by the end of that story expansion, and then if there's more grinding to get the rest, I would do it. But I would rather play the story first. You see what I mean? So we got to find out. I guess what we got to do is listen for more information over the course of this week on if this Pokemon expansion in one week's time from today is actually going to have story or not. Because it just, it really threw me for a loop reading that. I was like, why did they word it like that? Everyone thought the story elements we're going to be, uh, you know, coming out this week. So what happened? You know, what's going on here? What's the truth of the matter? So I guess we'll find out. Um, you know, come this, uh, well, come next Wednesday, and hopefully we'll have more information so I don't buy it, and then we go to play it, and there's nothing to do. <laughs> okay. Now, on Friday, the 19th of June, which is one week from this Friday, it's the big release of The Last of Us 2, Yes, this is the big game everyone's waiting for, for multiple reasons. Some people just because they like The Last of Us and they want to continue with the plot, and it's a big, big AAA game from Naughty Dog, but other people 
obviously are dying to see what this game actually ends up being after having supposed spoilers out on the internet for two months now. Were the spoilers true? Or were they bullshit? At what element, at what point of the story do the spoilers take place? How much does it affect the story? Etc. Etc. I think we're all interested and excited to see how this is going to go. One way or another. Alright, so that, yes, I will be covering that heavily for sure. And then that next week after that, which would be, I guess, the next to last week of June. SpongeBob. The Battle for Bikini Height. The what? The Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. I skipped a, 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 like a whole word there. Um, will be coming out. And yes, I'm checking that out too. People have wanted me to play that for so long. That was actually a viewer's choice vote from last year. And I said I would play it when it came out. And it's coming out finally. So SpongeBob is coming around the corner. All right. So. Sleeping Dogs and Fire Emblem, the focus of this next week. Then we got Pokemon sliding in. Then we got Last of Us 2, which definitely will be the major focus. And then SpongeBob to kind of finish off the month. All right. Um, now, in addition to all of that stuff I just mentioned, all right, we currently have nominations going on for the next retrospective marathon event. All right. Please continue to nominate your favorite moments. From my 11 plus years as a content creator, the more nominations we get, the better the event will be. It'll be a marathon style event where we'll be sitting back and relaxing while I watch back clips of my content creation, you know, over the ex incredibly long, um, you know, incredibly long history. Uh, so let's see what happens here. It should be fun. Last time around when we did a retrospective event, it ended up creating the vest meme. Single-handedly, people, you know, were made that, created that on the fly during the event. <clears throat> so I'm excited for it. Now, when is it going to take place? I'm going to say it's going to be the end of the month. Let's do it near the very end of June. That way, number one, it gives everyone a lot of time to nominate stuff. Number two, that gives me time to focus on all these crazy amount of games. And not that we're trying to interject it right into the middle of a new release week or anything like that. We'll probably do it right near the end of June, all right? I'll give you more information exactly when that's going to happen as we get closer to the end of the month. But just so you guys know and you're not, uh, you don't have false expectations of when it's going to happen or anything like that, all right? Now, in addition, I've stated that if we hit 150 vest streak, all right, that I will do another special event, in which case we will celebrate the ongoing positivity on, on my streams what we will do is, number one, I will do another episode of Live DSP Tries It. I don't know what it'll be. I got to think about it. I got a couple weeks here, at least, to think about it. I will try to do some special stuff on the stream, including maybe having Jasper back, including maybe doing more commentary over the music video remixes that we listen here on pre-stream. Um, a Q&A segment again. We'll definitely do that because that Q&A segment was pretty fun when we did one last time. The problem is the limitations of what I can really do, and I'm going to explain about that. In just a moment, when I talk about my day off yesterday, because it ain't looking good here in Washington State, just to tell you guys. I don't know how it's looking where you live, um, but the fallout of the coronavirus is pretty severe here, to the point where it looks like it may be a while before we are anywhere near a semblance of normalcy. And, you know, I want to talk about that because it, it actually shocked me. I thought yesterday was going to be a completely different situation than what it ended up being, okay? <clears throat> So, um, yes, there will be a vest celebration if we can keep the vest streak alive. All right, and we'll see if we can. Um, thank you to everyone who has been so positive in the last few months and kept the vest streak going. We're hitting the tips goal every single day. Um, let's see if we can keep that up. All right. Okay. So I think I covered all of the scheduling stuff. In addition to that, just a quick reminder that there is vest merchandise now available on my Teespring store. Three different designs of me wearing the three different colors of vests. It's all kinds of stuff, including t-shirts and mugs are available. Thank you to everyone who bought anything. In fact, giving a look here. Last I had checked, I believe I had, um, I believe I had actually sold around five pieces of merch. Let's see here. Give it a look. See if it's updated at all. I wasn't here yesterday, so chances are I didn't sell anything yesterday. Let's be honest here. But I just want to be curious. So we got one, two, 
three, four, five. Yeah, I think we're still. I think we're still at five. So five pieces of a uh, of vest merchandise. Pretty cool. So give it a look. Teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash DSP gaming. This is stuff you asked for for months. I finally, uh, you know, worked with a designer to release to uh, release this for you. It helps me out. You get a cool collectible out of it. <clears throat> Part of the big festival celebration. So give it a look. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what I want to talk about. I'm holding back on this, but I want to talk about what's going on here in Washington State. Okay, so as you know, this, this pandemic has been awful for everyone. Uh, people have died. We've been in lockdown. It's, it's got awful. We all know this. Everywhere around the world has handled this completely differently. Washington State in the United States was one of the first states hit by it. And because of that, we locked down relatively early compared to the rest of the country. We locked down really quickly at the beginning of this thing. Um, and quite frankly, um, you know, quite frankly, uh, it's been rough for everyone. And I know that. You guys have been telling me on the streams the last three months how rough it's been for you. And thank you so much for, you know, continuing to put out these consistent streams to keep your mind off of that stuff. And you're welcome. And I was very happy to be able to do it. I'm happy that I'm here to, to put out content for you guys during this very rough time that it's been for us over the last three plus months. All right. I hope, by the way, I hope everyone out there is well. I hope you're healthy. I hope that people are recovering from this thing. Because at this point now, at least in the United States, we're starting to reopen everything. Okay. <clears throat> Which brings me to my point. So after three plus months of full on lockdown. All right. The governor here decided on a whim on Friday, oh, okay, well, now I'm going to approve phase 1.5. What this means is that businesses can now open, non-essential businesses, all right? Um, it's going to be very limited capacity. Like, some businesses are only 25% capacity. Some are, like, 15 But basically, every, every place can open. It doesn't matter if you're essential or non-essential. Every business can open as long as they're following these COVID-19 social distancing guidelines. And already, there have been certain companies online that have been posting up things they're going to be doing. Like, for example, makeup stores, right? You have to think, damn, a makeup store might be one of the biggest places this can spread because people are constantly using the samples and things for makeup. Well, done. Cosmetic stores will no longer be having samples or anything like that. You just walk in, you see what's there, you buy, you leave. So a big part of that experience is done, <laughs> right? <clears throat> Restaurants. Now you can eat at a restaurant, but the restaurant has incredibly limited seating, as in, like, at least one empty table between all customers. You can only sit in groups of five. Like, it's very, very limited what everyone can do here. All right? But at least with this announcement, it's like, okay, this is cool. Things are going to reopen. And my wife and I were talking about what we were going to do on our day off this week. Because we were honestly nervous. We're like, what if we go out and everyone now who's been cooped up for three months rushes out to the stores because they're in a mad frenzy to be able to go buy and do things outside their house. They're all stir-crazy, you know, cabin fever. And they end up with lines going outside these restaurants, and they end up with all this stuff going on, right? It could be pretty bad. Um, so we said what we would do is we would go out and do the essential stuff we needed to do, like we needed to go to the pet store, and we needed to go grocery shopping. So we would do that stuff. Oh, and the drugstore, too. My wife wanted to go to a drugstore for, for a couple things. But after that, we would basically drive down to the local shopping area where we usually would go on our day off and see what's going on down there <clears throat> and see, is anything available at all to be open? For me, I was looking for a few things. I was looking for um, a charging cable for, for our phones because we've had some charging cables here that have worn out. And the only ones they have available at places that are open so far are really shitty generic ones that fall apart right away. And I used to get... Well, I got a really good charging cable at this local electronics place called Fry's that really is durable. And I'm like, man, I hope they have more of them. I'd like to buy those, but I haven't had a chance to get over there because they're closed because of the, the pandemic. In addition, <clears throat> um, you know, with, with the whole vest going on, the vest streak, you know, I've told you guys I would love to get out there and look for more vests and things that we could do for celebration purposes. Um because I haven't been able to. Everything's closed. And, you know, the only thing that's open is, like, Target. Target doesn't have vests right now. All they have is, like, workout clothes. You know, that's the kind of places that are open. I was like, man, once the clothing stores open up, like, maybe Kohl's or maybe, um, 
uh, like one of these places that takes in clothes from other stores that didn't sell and they sell them at a discount. Like, oh, here, there's a place called Burlington. And what they do is they do, they take all these, these high-end coats and jackets and clothing from other stores and they don't sell. They put them all together at their store and sell it for a giant discount. So that would be a good place. Or even like a secondhand store. There's a few secondhand stores around here where you could do that kind of stuff. And I figured they would have some stuff, right? But nothing's open. So like, damn, this week finally is our chance. We can go out and maybe things will be open. We'll be able to have some fun. And it was funny, too, because we were talking about, geez, you know, if we go to the mall, chances are a lot of the stores will still be closed, but at least we could kind of just walk around the mall. Just kill some time, right? So, yesterday we go out, and the first thing we did, we went grocery shopping, got that out of the way. Went to, we ended up going to two different grocery stores because we wanted this different kind of meat that they didn't have at one. Um, and the other one had it, which was nice. Went to a pet store, you know, went to the drug store, got all that done. By the way, we did order out food. We decided even if places were doing dine-in food, uh, we weren't going to do it. We were still going to order out because it would be safer, number one. And number two, we didn't know if there was going to be a crazy amount of people lined up at these restaurants or not that were now open. We'd rather just, you know, be more cautious at least for these first couple of weeks or whatever. Okay? So we ordered out food. We weren't going to eat out. But after we did all of our essential things, we said, now let's just for the hell of it, let's go drive down to the shopping area. And see what non-essential stuff is open. Um, and see what we could do. If we wanted to have some fun out on our dates. First day in three months where we're not officially in lockdown. You know, what, let's see what's going on. So we go out there. And we go to this, this you know, big shopping center area. And no exaggeration, 90% of the businesses are still closed. Now, I think it's a mixed reasoning why this is. Okay, some of them... I just feel our businesses that were not open at all, they didn't, they weren't deemed like they needed to be open even for online shopping. And because of that, they're still closed. And I started to think about it. Why? All right. So I'll give you an example. I just mentioned this company, Burlington. This, they used to be called Burlington Coat Factory. They used to be a place where you could get a bunch of coats really cheap. But what they are, they're like I said, they're a place they take all the unsold clothing from other stores that are more expensive and they sell the stuff at a discounted rate. So they're closed completely. Um, you know, they hadn't been open for online ordering during the pandemic. And even though that they're allowed to open, they're still closed. Okay. Um, so we start driving around and we start noticing, holy shit, either the rioting and looting in this area was much worse than we were led to believe by the, the social media posts of say the police department, or these companies were just so paranoid of looting. They completely boarded up everything. So I'm not exaggerating here. Probably about 70% of the businesses that we ran, that we normally would go to were completely boarded up and closed. The local Best Buy looked like someone hit it with a fucking missile. Every window had been crushed, and there were, you know, boards everywhere, and basically in handwritten signs it said, sorry, location temporarily closed, cannot serve you. Now, they had been open during the pandemic only for curbside pickup, but apparently because of the fucking riots that happened and the looting two weeks ago... They closed everything down here, which is pretty fucked up, okay? Um, then, we went to, of all places, a makeup place. It's called, I think it's called Ulta. I, I get confused because my wife likes to go to a few different ones. Completely boarded up, closed. And we're like, now they had already said online that they were going to be doing these special things for social distancing, but they're just closed here, okay? And it just was like that everywhere. Every store that we came up against was closed. Okay, now it's weird. Because you would think, why are they all closed if now legally they're allowed to open per, you know, the ruling of the governor or whatever? I don't understand. So then we said, all right, all these places are freaking closed. There's nothing we can do. Why don't we go to, to, to like another place? Kohl's, closed. And continuing, I, I don't want to mention every store we checked because we checked a few. All closed. Okay. So then we said, well, what about the hairdressers? Because, you know, eventually we need to get a haircut. And certainly we weren't looking that we were going to get a cut haircut yesterday. We were going to make an appointment or whatever. But we definitely, you know, we need haircuts. And that's the thing everyone's been talking about. Oh, my God, during the pandemic, the hairdressers are closed. You can't get your haircut, right? So, okay, well, let's take a look at that. Every single hair place is closed. Okay, why? Well, I'll talk about that in a moment because I think I have a theory as to why. They're all closed. In fact, one of them we went to had a sign 
taped on the front and it says, sorry everyone, due to the pandemic, it looks like we'll be closed at least until April 1st. We hope we can open in April again and uh, we hope to see you then. And I'm like, damn, that sign is two months outdated. No one ever came back to the store. It's just been completely closed for over, you know, two and a half, three months and no one ever came back to the store. They haven't even touched it even though they're supposed to open again. <clears throat> okay. So, then we finally, the last thing we do, we say, let's go to the mall. Let's see what's going on at the mall. Is the mall open? What stores are open? We were fascinated because in reality, this is what happens is when you have the freedom to do whatever you want, you basically take everything for granted. But then once that's taken away from you, you start to realize, man, there are things that we wish we could do that we can't do now. You know, in the mall in particular, there were two stores that there were things we had wanted to buy stuff from that we hadn't been able to buy stuff from in three months because the mall's closed. They're like, man, maybe they'll be open. This will be exciting. We can finally go do this. Okay. <clears throat> so we go to the mall. And I'm not exaggerating here. I wish I was. The mall looked like a demilitarized zone. And not because looters had broken into it because they hadn't. I'd actually read the local... Uh, postings from our law enforcement and everything, and they said the mall was not breached. People did try to breach the mall when they were trying to loot and riot, but they did not. The cops stopped them. But apparently, from what I can see, all right, um, basically these idiots, you know, ruined stuff for everybody. They went and they had they boarded up the entire mall. Was completely boarded up. They had roadblocks. Brock, blocking every single entrance to the mall parking lot. There was only one out of the entire giant mall. It's huge. There's only one way you can even get into the mall parking lot all the way around the back. And the reason that they had that one open is because the mall, even though it was completely closed and boarded up, there is one or two businesses around the mall that were open. For example, there's a Asian supermarket that's part of the mall that was operating independently of the mall and was open for business. So obviously they wanted people to still be able to get their groceries, so they had one entrance open to the mall, and that was it. Um, a few other things, like I, I think there was like, a, there's a, a seafood restaurant, and there's like a pizza slash pub restaurant. So there's a few restaurants that were open on the periphery or outside of the mall, but you could not go in the mall. It was still completely 100% boarded up like this. Okay? And... We're driving around, and I, I'm going to be honest, like, I'm not, by the way, I'm not one of these giant fucking people who believes in capitalism and trickle-down economics, the crazy shit that the people in our government try to say is part of our fucking society here. I'm not. But I'm going to be honest here. I've lived here for six years at this point. I was pretty sad, because this is where I fucking live. This is, you know, this used to be a thriving, robust community of everything, commerce, you know, families being out, going out to have fun. And I'm looking around and I'm like, this place is fucked up now. Like, you know, this is pretty bad. You know, I don't know what's going to happen here in regards to the future of where we live. And this is, I mean, I'm thinking, this is where we are. I can imagine a lot of the places in the country probably look like this right now. And, you know, how long is it going to take for these places to reopen and get back on their feet? In addition, how many won't ever reopen? Right? Because there's some of these places, you're, you're closed for three or four months. And after that, pff, you know, how are you going to handle it? You know what I mean? Like, so a lot of these places can't make any more uh, money. And they can't stay open anymore. And the thing is, I've talked about this publicly in the last three months. Has my, mo my life really changed that much during the pandemic? <clears throat> um... When it comes to me personally being affected, well, I am still very afraid for the health of my parents. They still live in Connecticut, which is still considered one of the hot zones for COVID-19, okay? So I am still, you know, in that regard, I'm still terrified. But outside of that, myself and my wife have kept our jobs. We're still able to work. We've been healthy because we've kept, you know, clean, washing our hands constantly. When we go out, we wear face masks. We're doing everything we're supposed to do. And in reality, I'm probably one of the least affected people by this whole thing. Just being honest. I am. I'm probably one of the least affected people by all of this. Um, and I'm lucky because of that. And I'm, I'm grateful because of that. You know, I realize how many people out there are severely hurting because COVID-19 closed down the country for three months. All right. So by no means am I complaining here. 
But it was depressing going out there and basically seeing these are all thriving businesses that were, you know, were doing well. Everything is closed. Even though they're legally allowed to open, they're still closed. And the question is, when will they open? You know what I mean? Like, when are these places going to open? Will they reopen? And so after thinking about it for a while and talking uh, with my wife about it during the day, I think we figured it out. Um, basically, I think what's going on is the following. Okay. Our governor handled this thing very poorly, in my opinion. That's my opinion. You could disagree. But our governor refused to set any kind of concrete guidelines and concrete timing for reopening of businesses at all. Instead, he would just on the fly make a new rule, make another new rule, change the stuff constantly, right? Just keep doing over and over and over. And because of that, these businesses, oh, we're going to open now? Oh, wait, now we can't open anymore. It was funny because last month I was getting emails from restaurants. Oh, it looks like we're going to be able to reopen. Oh, never mind. The governor changed his mind. Now he can't reopen again. So when you do that, okay, you hurt people. You do. And I think that this governor was so up in his offices, locked up with a bunch of, uh, you know, people researching the virus, that he didn't actually talk to anyone when it comes to business. He didn't talk to any of these communities or com you know anything to do with commerce at all about how would we actually realistically be able to reopen after three months of being closed down, okay? He didn't. I think he just kind of sat there and said, I'm just going to listen to people talking about the virus, the virus, the virus, the virus. Here's how it spreads. Here's what's happening. And I'm just going to keep putting guidelines out of extending the lockdown, extending the lockdown, extending the lockdown, and never actually realizing when the lockdown ends how this is going to affect things, Okay. Again, I could be wrong. This is just my take as someone who lives here in Washington State from what I've seen observing the news and everything that's been going on. All right. So after so many months, three plus months of being shut down, he finally agrees to a hybrid opening of phase 1.5, whatever. It's too late for a lot of these places. Okay. When you didn't know when, if and when you were going to be able to open because your leadership was very wishy-washy and didn't actually decide to do anything concrete, but instead, oh, we're just going to fly by the seat of our fans constantly and change things constantly. What ended up happening was I think a lot of these um, companies laid a lot of people off or, you know, fired them. I thought they would say they fired them. They probably let them off. I'll give you an example. I was really confused about the hairdressers because you would think everyone wants to get a haircut now. Everyone would be flocking to the hairdressers. Why would they not be open? And once I actually thought about it, I realized because they can't open. These places have been closed for two to three months. Originally, they thought they were going to only be closed for a few weeks, right? If you remember at the beginning of this thing, a lot of companies were actually extending pay and stuff for their employees, thinking this would be over quickly. And it's lasted over three months. So what ended up happening was these companies said, well, we have no idea when we're going to be able to reopen. Just lay everybody off. And they probably did. They probably laid off all of their employees. And those businesses now have no employees. So even though on Friday, the governor says, oh, everything can reopen. Well, guess what? <laughs> you can't. All these companies laid their people off not knowing what was going to happen. They couldn't keep paying them, right, during the time when the, the businesses were closed. So they just laid them all off. So they, can, they realistically cannot open. What they now would have to do, okay, they would have to reach out to all of their employees again, all these hairdressing studios and barber shops or whatever you want to call them, would have to reach out to their employees and say, hey, so what have you been doing for the past three months because now we're ready to reopen? And chances are many of these people are going to say, well, we filed for unemployment. This has been a made to it. You know, there was a big thing in the United States where our government had the relief bill. And one part was we all, you know, people, well, people got stimulus payments if they qualified for them, right? And if they, you know, also if they lost their job as a result of the pandemic, they were able to file for unemployment. However, the unemployment was paying more in some cases than what these people were making at their jobs. For example, retail jobs that typically in the United States pay anywhere from like $7 to maybe up to like $15 an hour, depending on where you live. Well, these people were making more than that on the unemployment, right? 
So think about this. Your, your retail job calls you back and says, hey, good news. The governor says we can reopen, man. You know, you can come back to cutting hair. You can come back to selling computers. You can come back to, you know, putting out clothes, whatever we used to do. And you're like, wait a minute. I'm on unemployment and I'm guaranteed to receive this all the way through July. And I'm getting paid more. So why the fuck would I go back to work? <laughs> so I would almost guarantee that some of these people who have been out of work for months are on unemployment are not going to go back now, at least unless they absolutely have to, right? Why would they? Can you blame them? That would be pretty stupid of them. Um, so even though the governor says, oh, magic reopening on Friday, everyone, because now I finally decided in all of my wisdom that now is the perfect time to reopen at a hybrid state, uh, guess what? No one can because no one has any employments. To, er, employments. No one has any employees to come back and work. They've now got to work out new work schedules, new criteria for people who come to work, how to stay safe. All this has to happen in a in a in a, a rushed state. Most businesses aren't equipped to handle that. They've never been in this situation before, right? So I would actually take a look and say I almost guarantee you that some of these businesses that are closed may take multiple weeks if not months to finally reopen that mall that's completely boarded up no one can even go back to work until they unboard it up so you know and that's it was two yesterday was tuesday so the change happened on friday it was tuesday and the whole mall was still blocked everything was still shut down so it's obvious that whoever owns the mall i think it's the name of the company is like westfield they're probably in no big rush to do so they probably have the opinion that, hey, no one's ready to come back and do anything anyway, so we'll, we'll do it when we're, we're good and ready. Um, so this could take a long-ass time. This could be a huge uh, time frame for recovery of our country. I definitely see anything that's been closed down for two, three months uh, may have a very hard time reopening. These are very big challenges for these companies that I don't think the leadership in, in, in the government really thought about. They were just, oh, the virus, the virus, the virus. Shut everything down because of the virus. On the fly, we'll make judges about the virus, the virus, the virus. They're like, okay, are you talking to any actual fucking humans? Are you sitting inside of a fucking office studying the virus all day? Are you talking to people about how realistically we could get stuff back going once we reopen? Did you ever think about that? Or did you just think about the virus, the virus, the virus? I don't want to be responsible for virus deaths. I don't want to be responsible for having a state outbreak. So shut everything down forever. And then, oh, magic reopening, everybody. It's pretty stupid. Um, I, I'm sorry. I'm just, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing yesterday. Again, I thought it was going to be the opposite. I thought all week all the businesses would reopen and you'd have people flocking to the stores. And, of course, that's just going to cause another problem with the virus. But instead, everything's just completely shut down still. In fact, I'll even say this. You know, all these, uh, all these places um, were able to have indoor seating. And very few restaurants were even doing it. Uh, most fast food restaurants have said, fuck it. We don't need the indoor seating anymore. We're not even going to open our indoor seating. We don't care. Just go go to the drive through. Uh, there were a few actually. There were a few restaurants that that emailed me, you know, because I'm basically kind of on their their your mailing list or whatever. And they said, "Hey, we're open. Please come in and eat." Because we don't know if anyone's going to show up today. Because we don't know what's going on. You know, we hope people would show up to eat. And I guess a lot of these businesses, no one's showing up to eat in person. They're still just ordering out at a very limited capacity of what they used to do. Um, so it's pretty crazy and I don't know, like this blew me away. Really? It threw me for a loop. I was not expecting this whatsoever. It's completely the opposite of what I thought I was going to see out there. Um, what's funny though, is other stores that have remained open the entire time seem to be back to normal. So for example, I've been telling you guys for the past three months on my day off, I get up extra, extra early. And I go grocery shopping between 8 and 9 a.m., which is the earliest you're allowed into the store. Before then, it's considered senior-only hours, right? So yesterday, I went in to grocery shop. I was, like, maybe one of 20 people in the whole store. It was empty. And I'm not complaining. Hey, I can go through the store and do what I need to do. The lines at the front of the store were empty. They had four clerks there to check people out. No one was in line. It was I walked any line I wanted. Um... So it's almost like in regards to the stores that have remained open, things are back to normal. The panic is kind of over. Um, 
Not to say that all the stuff is in stock. It's not. I did notice they did have some antibacterial cleaner, which I couldn't believe. It was the first time I'd seen that in three months. But hand soap is still incredibly low stock. They barely have any. Um, you know, so it's kind of a mix, a mix there, a hybrid, a mixed bag. But I was just, I was like, yeah. Th so grocery stores are now normal. You know, you don't have the. Remember when I this had started? It didn't matter what time I went to the store. I was going to eight in the morning, and it was packed from brim to brim, giant lines and shit at eight in the morning because people were panic buying like crazy. The panic buying is over at this point. Um. So, anything that stayed open looks like it's going to be fine. In fact, I would, you know, I would suspect these businesses thrived during this time period, right? Like, they probably made money hand over fist. They were the only thing that was open. So, of course, people just went to the supermarkets. They went to Walmart. They went to Target. They went to the drugstores. These have now become the new normal of shopping for people in the United States. They didn't go anywhere else. And so, now the other stores can't open, and these stores are going to continue to be, like, the big places to go. But that's not good because that means that people are all crowding at, you know, a third of the stores they used to go to, which is just going to make the virus spreading worse. You know what I mean? So this is pretty bad, man. I don't know. That's my that's I just wanted to relay some of what I found yesterday, my perspective. What I'm hoping is maybe it's not as bad as I'm suspecting. Maybe within the next one to two weeks, there is a plan in place to get these places open again, get them staffed again, and get, you know, things at least heading back towards the semblance of normal. I mean, at least, even if you got to wear a mask everywhere you go, even if you got to stay six feet away, even if you got to wash your hands all the time, that's better than not being able to go anywhere because everything's still closed and all these places are going out of business, you know? So I guess we'll see what happens. Um, I guess we'll see what happens and uh, and go from there, Okay. But uh, that's my story for today. You know, that's what happened with me yesterday. And obviously, uh, there'll, hopefully there'll be more updates. Hopefully things will change for the better. And I'll be able to let you guys know, uh, you know, if, you know, if things start to get better around here. And certainly I hope you guys would tell me about your personal experiences too. You know. Um, <clears throat> all right. All right. Well, that was a long segment. Let's get to the shout outs because I know usually you guys have a lot of things to talk about in the shout outs. Okay. Um. So, during my day off, Froggins cheered and said, do you think the game should implement a streamer's mode in the settings where it will replace licensed music with unlicensed or royalty-free music? I think that could help solve the copyright problem on YouTube and now on Twitch. Yes. Yes. I mean, that would be amazing, of course. When you're making a game, right, um, in reality, what percentage of your customers are live streamers? Maybe 20%. And the reason I say that is because live streaming is becoming way more popular now. Even people who don't do it for a living like to do it for fun. It's very common now. But are you really going to change the entirety of your game and what you put in it in order to accommodate a small group of people? Right? I don't know. If it really isn't a ginormous thing, then maybe uh, they won't do it. Or maybe this. Maybe they can sell two different versions of the game digitally. One is the full-fledged licensed music version of the game, and the other is the streamer version that doesn't come with that music. Instead, it has the different music, and maybe the, the, the money... You know what I mean? Like, if you buy one version, the money goes to the artists on one side. I don't know. Actually, that wouldn't work because it doesn't go to... It doesn't work that way. They get paid a flat rate to have their music in the game. <clears throat> they don't get residuals or anything for their music being in the game. I don't know. What I would say is, would it, would it make sense... For a content creator, absolutely. Realistically, would this happen? I don't think it would happen anytime soon. I think this is something maybe down the line when more and more people are into the interactive experience of streaming and sharing your experiences with people over the internet. And it becomes so common that actually a majority versus a minority of people want to stream and can't because now DMCA takedowns and shit. Then it will become a concern. But in reality, I don't think it's, it's a major thing. Two years ago, Forza Horizon, what was it? Forza Horizon 4 came out, and it supposedly had a mode in it that said it was like stream mode or whatever. All those videos got claimed on YouTube, every single one. Because even though the music was supposed to be friendly, it wasn't, and it all got claimed anyway. So, <laughs> it didn't, yeah, what they're, what they're trying to do didn't work. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, would it make sense? Yes. Is it possible right now? I don't think so. Probably not. I don't foresee it happening. Golden Coast at 100 bits year overnight. 
and says, I know I've been uh, remiss lately with overnight cheer, so here you go, my big guy, big ups. Yeah, well, you know, Golden Colts used to be someone who used to cheer overnight all the time, and I always gave him a shout-out in the morning. It's been quite some time since he did so. And I will say this. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't ever have to feel pressured when it comes to supporting me in my streams um, in regards to say, oh, I used to support Phil, I don't do it anymore, but I'm still a regular or whatever. I don't want anyone to feel that way. You know, you don't have to, you know, just because you supported me at one time, if you can't now, that's okay. If you choose not to, that's okay. I'm grateful for the time when you were able to support me in any way that you did. Um, I really am. And I don't want anyone to, to, I've said this many times, I don't want anyone to feel here, oh, I'm the odd man out. I feel pressured now because I'm not contributing to everyone else's, right? You know, and Golden Colts used to be someone who would cheer all the time and hasn't in quite some time. And that's okay. He doesn't have to feel, you know, bad or feel like pressured because he didn't do it all right so i hope that you that you understand that golden colts i never ever in one moment felt oh my god you know he's not supporting me anymore what did i do wrong or this is terrible that's not the case everyone is still welcome <clears throat> i hope you guys know that and uh i certainly hope that uh you know you don't feel bad it's not what it's about it's never been about that okay but thank you golden colts thank you for the cheer I do appreciate that. <clears throat> okay, so now we get the people who have contributed during the live stream itself. Only Iced Coffee gifted a sub to Hermione. Congratulations to Hermione, and thank you to Only Iced Coffee for the support. Edward Colston, to me a dollar, asking, am I going to uh, live stream live reactions to the PS5 event? No. He says, it feels like you're being stubborn at this point. I, it's nothing to do with being stubborn. It's the kind of content that I like to do. The style of content that I like to do versus everybody else. I don't have to do what everyone else does. I can be a little different, and that's okay. If you don't understand that being a little bit different is okay, I don't know what to tell you. I guess you want a world where everyone's exactly the same, dresses the same, acts the same. Uh, I don't. All right? Personally, my personal preference is to watch a press conference together with you guys by, by hosting it on my stream taking notes, and then being able to do a recap and reactions right after it. I don't feel there's any value in live facial reactions to things you're seeing on a fucking stream like that. And I actually think that the camera would, would do one of two things. Either I'd be pressured to somehow be entertaining you guys, and therefore it would take away from my ability to focus on the conference and actually take notes so I can say something intelligent about the shit after. Or it would be the complete opposite. I would just sit there taking notes, paying no attention to the camera or caring, saying nothing, and... Instead, you guys would just complain that, wow, this is incredibly boring. No shit. I don't sit here and make funny faces when I watch a press conference. I never have and never will. So there's no point in doing it. Just because you think there's value in it doesn't mean that I, as a content creator, think there's value in it. I don't care about doing that stupid shit, and I'm not going to do it. All right? If ever there was anyone who could prove there was value in it, I wish you could. Not a single person ever in the history of everyone doing the live reactions to this shit has ever once convinced me. And no one even tries. They just say, just do it because everyone else does it. Well, I'm not a follower. I'm a leader. I, use, I do things differently. I always have. I beat to the march under my own drummer. And if you don't like that, I don't know why on earth you would watch my content after 12 years of me doing that. I just don't understand. <clears throat> Ace did a 50-bit cheer. First cheer of the day. He says, I'm playing Alien Isolation. I recall your review... How you justifiably called all the ridiculous claims made by IGN uh, and GameSpot. I'm playing on Nightmare Mode. I still have no issues with item management. And IGN's reviewer played on hard for the review. <clears throat> I don't remember, Ace, what those reviewers said. I really don't. Um, what I can remember was when I played Alien Isolation, there was a few things I really liked about it. The fact that it wasn't just about the alien. At first you thought it was going to be. But also that the humans on the station who had kind of lost their minds as well as the robots, the androids, who had lost their programming and were attacking the humans were just as much of a threat, if not more of a threat, than the alien at times. <clears throat> it really added um, to the tenseness of everything in the game um, and made it quite unique and interesting. Um, also, the fact that it was not really about combat, even though combat was a part of it, it was about being smart about how you were going to go about sneaking around. And the very big suspense and tenseness of when those aliens were there. And you knew there was no way you could stop an alien. But you had to carefully try to sneak by them and stuff. It was very creepy. It actually did it creep me out and a lot of the times. Although admittedly, I remember being frustrated a few times in the game that were really annoying and difficult. 
I still really enjoyed the game. Now, I don't remember the reviews. This is many, many years ago that you're referencing, so I don't remember what the reviews said in particular about the game negatively. But as you know, I usually will call out reviewers if I feel that they're being unfair, and I in that game, I guess it, they were. So there you go. Thank you for the cheer, Ace. I really liked that game. It's a shame they never made a sequel. I think a sequel would have done well, but for whatever reason, just another franchise that never got a sequel. <clears throat> Someone named DSP believes in QAnon to me a dollar two talking about the Seattle Autonomous Zone. Uh, I don't really want to talk about it because, number one, I'm not really fully educated on it. I don't know what's really going on there. Apparently there's like a, a series of blocks in downtown Seattle where people who are anarchists during these protests and during this looting and everything have taken over a chunk of downtown Seattle, thrown out the police. The police have abandoned it, basically. And they said, oh, this is now no longer the United States. This is a, 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 an independent country where we're going to be doing things for ourselves and everything. Um, I don't know. I don't know anything about, you know, again, I don't know the ins and outs of it. I'm certainly not into this whole we have to split apart from our civilized society and do things our way kind of a mentality. I never have been. Um, so I'm not going to sit here and pretend to be educated and talk about the subject. I'm a gameplay streamer. I don't know shit about that. So thanks for the tip. Boris Johnson. To me, $2. Says, are you covering the PS5 game reveal tomorrow? How are you going to do it? I've already explained. Um, <clears throat> the way we're doing it is I'm going to live stream an hour before it. We're going to speculate. We're going to hype. We're going to talk a little bit about everything. What games do you think they're going to talk about? What's going to be revealed? in this presentation. After that hour, we're going to watch it together live on the stream. All right? I'm going to be taking notes. I'm going to basically be, be hosting it so we can watch it all together. I'll be taking notes. And then when it's done, I'm going to go live again. We're going to do a recap and reactions segment. I said this about four times during the pre-stream so far today. Um, so hopefully, <clears throat> people will tune in tomorrow. As I said, the vest streak will be, you know... Eligible. I'm not going to just ex exclude this this unique stream from it. It's going to be part of the vest streak, and I'm I'm honestly nervous, but we'll see what happens tomorrow and see if we can keep it going or not. All right. All right. Um, he also says, "I bought Fire Emblem. I'm 20 hours into it. I paused my game to watch you. I'm in a different house too. If you're in a different house, I, I wonder if the game's completely different or not. I have no idea how different the experience is in the three different houses." Um, I'm not even 20 hours into it yet, I don't think. I want to say I'm like maybe 15 hours into it. So you're ahead of me. Um, but, you know, no surprise if you're just playing it constantly while I'm balancing it with all these other game playthroughs. It makes sense, right? Um, so, all right, well, good. Thank you for the tip. Yes, I'm covering it tomorrow. No, I'm not doing live reaction, you know, like a lot of people do. But it should still be a lot of fun. Well, Gerard Crow cheered, saying stuff about the lockdown. I already answered this, so thanks to Gerard Crow for the cheer. I'm not going to waste time talking about the same thing that we just talked about, okay? All right, Noah Taylor did a 240-bit cheer, which is the biggest cheer of today's pre-stream. He says, good luck on today's game. Thank you, Noah Taylor. Uh, yes, today's game is Fire Emblem, and thank you for that. And, of course, later tonight, it'll be Sleeping Dogs. What the... Wow, I did not have my hands on the home row keys, did I? <laughs> not even close. So there's a 240-bit cheer. Thank you, Noah Taylor, for the biggest cheer of the day. Lies for Soul Cheer said, I've been watching your Dragon Ball Kakarot playthrough. You're going to play the Dragon Ball Super arc that's in the game. There is no Dragon Ball Super arc that's in the game. The arc that's in the game is a what-if scenario arc that is not canon that apparently discusses the origins of Vegeta going Super Saiyan God. It is not the actual Dragon Ball Super arc that people are waiting for and apparently was expected to come out and hasn't yet. When the actual Dragon Ball Super arc comes out, that's the canon Dragon Ball Super story, then I would very, very much consider playing it because I didn't watch Dragon Ball Super. I, you know, I would love to actually experience that story. But at this point, we've had zero updates about it, right? We don't know when it's coming out or anything. So, no, I'm not playing what's in there now, but I may play what's in there later. Proficient Fox Cheer says... I know about the in-game music and video game situation on Twitch. Wouldn't this defeat the purpose of this platform? I'm not saying it actually is. Huh? So what you're saying is, in regards to playing music in games, does it defeat the, 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 the purpose of Twitch as a platform? No. Twitch is a platform. The purpose is to interact with a live audience, mostly with games, but in other ways as well, and have a social experience. That's the point of Twitch. You can't really do that with an on-demand video. 
I think maybe what you're what you're insinuating, okay? What you're insinuating is that a lot of people came to Twitch solely because they felt that they were they were protected from music issues and DMCA takedowns if they streamed on Twitch rather than say just doing videos on YouTube or streaming on YouTube or streaming other places. That it wasn't a big deal here. All right, you may be right. You absolutely may be right, but that's not what I'm here for. So for me, <clears throat> no, this doesn't defeat the purpose of Twitch whatsoever. Maybe for other people, but not for me. Only Iced Coffee. Give this up to Kate. Congratulations, Kate. And thank you, Only Iced Coffee, for the support. Snorlax Cherry said, now that Twitch is getting problems with DMCA, are you afraid of false strikes reports similar to YouTube and you and Kat watching the Sony conference together? Number one, no, I'm not afraid of false strikes because it can't happen because I don't archive anything here. I don't archive a damn thing on my Twitch. Um, because I don't, there's nothing to strike. You see what I mean? If I had a, a giant library of on-demand videos, yeah, I don't archive stuff on my Twitch. So I'm not worried about it whatsoever. What are you going to do? File fa false claims against stuff that doesn't exist? <laughs> right? Um, Twitch, I can tell you this for certain. Twitch definitely reviews things in a very different manner than YouTube does. Um, many cases, they actually have an actual human review shit. I can tell you from a personal experience, there have been people who forever since I came back to Twitch have been false filing stuff against me constantly, and Twitch does not put up with that shit. They don't entertain bullshit. They don't. They absolutely refuse to entertain bullshit. They will review it to make sure that it didn't really happen, but they do not entertain bullshit. Okay? So I hope you guys understand that. Um, you know, nothing. I, I'm not worried whatsoever I don't archive any 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 videos, any clips. I don't archive anything on my channel at all. So, there you go. Um, Snorlax cheer. He said, now that Twitch... Oh, I already read that. No, Noah Taylor cheer. said, are the sub badges like crowns also good luck today? Uh, I have no idea. Are they good luck today? Why would they be good luck today in particular? I don't know. Is there a holiday I'm not aware of? I don't know. <clears throat> Well, Gerard Crow, he says, well, the value in having the live reactions on a chill stream, you're hanging out with your viewers live, watching the conference together, and you're shooting the shit. That's why other people do it. You can just not take notes and instead have a good time with your viewers instead of trying to describe the entire event after the fact. Great. And that's what everyone else does. And that's not what I do because I feel that I have more value doing it the way that I do because it allows me to formulate intelligent thoughts instead of just knee-jerk reactions to what I'm seeing. I don't have to talk over the conference, right? Which is incredibly fucking stupid. It's an important conference. Let's talk the fuck over it to try to be entertaining. No! If you don't like it, don't come to the stream tomorrow! I'll be doing something different afterward. I promise you. I promise you. But if you're so annoyed by the way I do things, don't show up! Holy shit. Some people just can't be helped. Only Ice Coffee, and I'll give the sub to King Gokin. Congratulations, King Gokin. I appreciate it. Uh, excuse me. Congratulations, Only Ice Coffee. I appreciate it. And thank you. Uh, welcome, King Gokin, to the sub club. <laughs> um, an anonymous dollar thirty tipper who doesn't mind their own business, apparently, asks, did I and Nihilistic Goldfish, or Nihilist Goldfish, have a falling out? I haven't seen him in a while. No. Um, I saw him as recently as in the last week. And I don't talk with my viewers and stuff behind the streams. You've seen any interactions I've had with him. Um, maybe he's just moved on. Maybe he's got other shit to do. Maybe he's got a life and, you know, he cannot be at every single possible stream, but he'll come back when he feels like he's ready. It's not my job to, to keep track of and police every viewer of mine. I don't know why this is your business or why you're asking, quite frankly. It seems like you're a little bit nosy. Right? So maybe you should just relax like everyone else. Okay. Lego Mario took me a dollar. It says certain video games not allow you to link your Spotify account so you can play whatever music you want. Why can't all games do this? It would be helpful for streamers. They wouldn't have to pay to get licensed music in their games. Um, I don't know anything about that. I've never played a game that links a Spotify account. I don't have a Spotify account. But you do realize that when you rebroadcast music, even if you've paid money to listen to it, it's still against the rules. Like, for example... If you have a Spotify or a Pandora account or any of those, and you pay to use them, 
you're only paying for the license to listen to the music personally in your own setting. You're not paying for a license to rebroadcast that music over the internet. Or else you could just give music away for free constantly over the internet. You know? So, this was a big issue. Remember, way back in the day, 20 years ago, when file sharing first hit the internet with things like Napster and FileZilla and shit like that, where people were like, well, because I bought the CD, I have the legal right to do whatever I want with the music, so I'm ripping the music and putting it out on the internet for free. And then all the courts ruled, no, that's completely false, that's not true, and they changed all the laws to make it reflect that you can't do that. So it's the same thing, you know, with those uh, streaming accounts. You can't do that. So I'm not sure what you're exactly you're getting at, Lego Mario. If you were able to link your Spotify account to a game, that would be only for your own personal use, and it would not apply to streaming or anything like that. Okay? Alrighty then. Um, all right. Let us give some shout outs to the top contributors of the week so far. And then we will take a, a break and get ready here. When I come back, you know, it'll be the beginning of Fire Emblem. So thank you to, I cannot read this, The Last Rainbow 341 and Eternal Napalm, who were tied for ninth place. Jasper Kitty is in eighth place. Ninstar Rune is in 7. Silsilian Gangster and Sea Dude or Psy Dude are tied for 5th. Noah Taylor is in 4th. Captain K Man is in 3rd. Junior Mint is in 2nd. And Lice for Souls, the top cheer so far this week. Thank you guys for the support. Thank you to those who have gifted subscriptions this week. I Killed Phil, Big Papa Phil, AJ the DJ, and Ghost in the Chat have all gifted single subs. Only Ice Coffee, I believe it was this morning, gifted 4. There may be people who gifted more because I remember there were people who gifted some on Monday and they weren't showing up in the stats for some reason. I apologize for that. I don't know what it is, what kind of a weird glitch or whatever happens here on Twitch that not all the, the, the contributions show up on the leaderboard. But thank you to anyone who contributed so far. And, of course, uh, thank you to anyone who's considering contributing today to the tip's goal to make the vest streak continue. All right? All right. Let's take a brief break. I'll go use the restroom. Um, we'll get ready here. We'll come back. Fire Emblem Three Houses continues right where we left off the other day. We're in the middle of a bunch of support conversations. So we'll keep on doing those. I actually got a little bit of advice since the last time I played. So I'll talk about that when we boot up here and we get started and we resume and we'll go from there. Okay? <clears throat> All right, guys. I'll be back in just a minute. Thanks for, for chilling. I'll see you in a few. 